So thanks for joining me tonight for easy watercolor landscape tutorial four, actually. So we're up to four now. Um, and so I thought it would be good tonight to do a, a simple watercolor landscape. I'm just checking out this brush uh, that I purchased off Amazon. It's a large, like it's a size 20 synthetic sable. So there were some good reviews about it, so I thought I'd try it out. Uh, so we'll try it out just doing this very simple landscape. All we're going to do is just do some mountains off in the distance, graduated wash. Uh, yeah, we might just do a, let's do a graduated wash sky and then we'll do um, quite a weak wash of mountains and then we'll just gradually get a little bit stronger as we come in and as we do layers, it'll get stronger too. So let's, let's just do that now. I'm just using Payne's Gray. I'm using Arches, uh, 300 GSM paper. If you've got any questions let me know if you want to know more about paper then check out the the card above and if you want to know more about brushes then check out the card that comes after the card about paper um, and if you want to know some more about you know the the paper the paints the brushes then you can check out some of my previous videos i'm not going into that tonight so all i'm going to do is just tilt this uh, page up and that's why i like painting on a board actually because it gives me control so I'm just going to tilt this page up I'm going to load up with some Payne's Grey uh, and it's quite a solid mix so I probably should have uh, watered it down a bit but I'll just deal with that okay so it's a very solid mix of Payne's Grey that I'm just going to run across the top I'm going to load up with a bit of water and just uh, take that down get a bit more water run that across bit more water and I'm just going to make it so that obviously if I wanted to run more I can tilt it more. I'm just going to run that across there again. Just I keep putting the brush into the water and if my water the reason why I have quite a few jars generally because if the water doesn't clear it's like I've got Payne's Grey is a pretty strong pigment so if I feel like I'm getting down towards the bottom here and my water isn't running clear enough I'll just load up with some clear water and that will just help with that transition into uh, here. So generally when I'm painting watercolour I like to have a lot of jars around me full of different water so that if one gets muddy, so I flick this brush out and if this brush is worth its good reviews then it should really suck that, suck that up. It's alright. I suppose you just There we go, beautiful. Right, so uh, if I haven't got too much water at the bottom, if you wanted to mop any water up, excess water up at the bottom, then you could do that. If you wanted to clean up the sides, then you could. And the reason why you might want to take that water off the bottom before you lie it down, because otherwise it might rush back up. So we've done the graduated wash, I'll just dry that quickly now, okay? Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is just put in some mountains. And so, again, I'm going to tilt it up. And this time I'm going to use my uh, much smaller brush, uh, round sable this time. So we're just going to come down a bit and it doesn't really matter. And with a round sable, you could uh, end up making some round edges quite easily. So, uh, and then we get a bit of water here. So because I've just, and it doesn't, I've got to act quickly actually because I just used the hairdryer, which means that the paper is going to be warmer, which means that it's more likely to create a hard edge. So you can see here, this is pure round table, even though it's about half the size of that size 20. It is, just does a beautiful job of just being able to lay water down onto the page. Considering its size, 
packs a lot of punch. I'd love a size 20 pure sable, but I think I'd have to remortgage my house, so I, I'm not doing that at the moment. So I'll just flick that out, clean up these bits here, clean up down here. Then I can lay that down, clean up the edges, and then I'll just dry that, okay? Alright, <clears throat> so the next step is we'll do another wash, this time we'll probably make it a little bit stronger. <clears throat> and again I'm going to just tilt it up again and um, I can just play around with where I'm going to put something this time. So. Uh, Keeping this very simple, just doing some, taking it all the way down again. That's my possum, beautiful ringtail possum that comes across the roof of my studio every night. I'll get some footage of it one night. So you may have noticed I washed out the brush and I just brought this in here so there's just a bit of variance and I loaded this up so it had a fair bit of pigment there so that then because the problem is if you did too light a wash over the top of that because watercolour is generally quite transparent you know it varies but it's transparent generally uh, if you do a light wash you'll see the mountain behind and that's obviously mountains aren't transparent so have to be aware of that by either doing a detailed pencil drawing and doing each section or uh, making sure that the strength of tone takes away that line so uh, I'll just dry this now do the next layer one of the time-consuming things with watercolor is the drying but at the same time it just means you can work quite fast in the dry it and do the next layer, do the next layer, do the next painting, do the next painting. So you can work quite fast which is great. Right, next layer. Let's just bring something in here. A bit more solid this time. But it doesn't need to stay solid. If you wanted some, uh, let's just take that excess water off for a second. If you wanted some lights to be coming in through here, you could just take a little bit out there, a little bit out there if you wanted. Oh, I've run out of tissues. Lovely. I'll just I'll just dry that. All right. So the next thing I'm going to do. Just lift out a bit of a lake. So I've got this 3M tape that I've shown you before. It's this Scotch Magic tape. Again, not sponsored. And um, we just get the flat nylon. Get some nice uh, clear water. And so I've got this flat nylon here. And um, 
I've taken a little bit of extra water off it. I've pressed this tape down and then I'm just going to run this. Lovely. And then what I'm going to do is just get a tissue and just take that out. that. So the last thing we're going to do is I'm just going to get this uh, two inch hate brush and I'm just going to load that up with some strong pigment and I'm just going to come in from the side here and just create a little bit of foreground. I might even just tilt it up, use a spray bottle. fan brush here. Oops. And I could just use that to just um, use this one. Might need to load that up with a little bit more pigment. If I need to and just tease out some grasses than I could. Just might mop up a bit of water here. If you let water sit for too long, it's more likely to soak into the paper and then just make your life harder. That's why it's always best to just take off the excess. And so then if I wanted to, I could bring in a, a, a branch or a tree or something like that if I wanted to and I could use quite a few different things to do that. I'll lay this down. So I'm just going to soften this edge here just a bit. Just soften that a bit just so that's not too much of uh, the subject. So I'll just put in one um, branch stick just, just here, okay? So um, we'll, we'll see how that works. Uh, it seems to me like probably the right place to put it, but we'll see. So all I'm going to do, we'll see how this goes. I'm loading up the, the, the little pen knife that I've got, and I'm just going to uh, see how I go, just lying, laying that in. So you need a bit of pigment there.
And there are lots of other brushes that you could use to do this with. The rigger, rigger brushes are pretty good. Uh, if you wanted to get some, some fine lines of branches just going in different directions. Anyway, I'll just leave that there like that. So, a gnarled old pencil pine in Tassie uh, against one of the tarns. So, that's, that's the end of this demonstration. I'll just dry it. So thanks for joining me tonight in Easy Watercolour Landscape Tutorial 4, where we did some graduated washes in Payne's Grey, um, and we lifted out some lights and then we brought in some really strong tones here and, and used the, um, the, the pen knife, you know, the little pen knife here to do that tree. Did some grasses with a, 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 a fan brush and, um, and there's lots of other things that we could do here, really. We could start to put some more detail here in the mountains. We could use a spray bottle to create some stars or use some gouache on a toothbrush to, to speckle the top there if we wanted that to be full of stars or lift out a moon if we wanted to do a, a blob of water and then lift that out we, we could do that so there's lots of things we could do but we'll just leave that there for tonight and we'll we'll do another painting next time so thanks for joining me again if you want to know about each week that i produce a video then press the subscribe button and then press the bell button and then you'll just get notified each time i uh, produce a video and if you've got any questions at all then leave them in the comments below and um, anything that I use tonight, the paints, the brushes, even the filming equipment is all in the description below and there are links to affiliate links. Um, but you can use whatever you would like to paint. The most important thing is to actually paint and to get used to the paints and brushes and paper that you use. So thanks for joining me and I'll see you next week. Thanks again. And thanks to my subscribers, I really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys soon. Thanks, bye.